Hello and welcome back to our virtual classroom. I'm Joe Carswell and this lesson is a lecture that's going to cover some basic construction materials that we make out of wood, but they're not solid wood. We call them engineered wood products. Welcome to our channel. By now we've loaded almost 100 videos onto YouTube so that anyone can have access to structured trades training resources. We are really trying to grow this channel and the best way for that to happen is for you, the viewer, to subscribe. Also, if you learned something from these videos, don't forget to click like. So thanks for your support. Let's get back into the lesson. First category I want to talk about with engineered wood materials is stranded wood materials. Uh, these are made from basically scraps or very small pieces of wood. We can glue all those together with a lot of pressure and glue and make things out of them that we can't make in nature. So we're always thinking about the limitation of the wood and how we can overcome that. All of these materials come in different forms. Let's start with panels, which would be OSB panels. If you look close at this uh, piece of uh, panel, there's a lot of small pieces of wood that are laid in a lot of different directions. We call this particular material OSB or oriented strand board. We can make panels out of this and beams. An oriented strand board uh, is a bunch of these pieces of wood glued together in a lot of different directions. So we're getting that strength of the wood grain. If you remember when we're talking about lumber, we have the strength of the wood in the direction of the wood grain. So all of these parts are adding strength in all different directions. We can't get that out of natural lumber. So this is a huge benefit to this process. Also, the glues and the multiple layers that are in this piece on this edge, this stuff when they start in the factory would be about that thick. And when they squeeze it down, they squeeze it down this far. So this becomes a very dense material. It's heavier than the actual wood that it's made of. And it becomes very strong because of all those reasons. So OSB is a great material. We use it a lot. It's very affordable. It's made to be sustainable. We no longer need large trees. We can use small trees. We can use fast growing trees. And we can even use scraps from lumber that we actually create to make this material. The most common use of OSB you can see in this picture, it's sheathing on the outside of a house. It could be decking for the roof or it could be floor material, floor decking. All three of those are perfect uses for this material. A lot of times our panel materials are squared on the edges like this and they would just butt up to each other. Sometimes we have specialized edges. They would be tongue and groove. This comes from uh, I'm used to it with hardwood floors, very common system of attaching materials, but I have my tongue that sticks out and I have my groove that would accept that tongue. And when they go together, these panels lock together. This helps us when we're installing it. It adds more strength to the whole situation. And this is sort of an added feature on one of these engineered wood panels. OSB comes in a lot of thicknesses. Some common ones you'll see in construction would be half inch. That would be typical wall sheathing. You might see five eighths. That would be typical for a roof deck. You might see three quarters. That's very standard for floor surfaces like subfloors. You might even see a seven sixteenths as a wall sheathing. That's also a common one. Of course, panel sizes for OSB are standard as well. Four by eight. That's a favorite one that we always use for a lot of different sheet goods. Uh, OSB can grow though. Uh, you might see four by nine or four by 10. This has become more common as we're trying to sheathe past a first floor or make better connections for shear walls on the outside of a house. Like lumber stamps, there are stamps on panels like OSB that tell us a lot about that product and how it's made. You can't always tell by looking at OSB how well it will perform, strength, all of that. But these stamps will give you that information. In this particular stamp, you're going to find a grade on that. You'll find a span rating that tells you how strong it is and the, the, the way the framing needs to uh, be spaced underneath of it. You'll also find an exposure rating. How well will, will it weather before it gets covered up? You'll find the thickness spelled out sometimes in a fraction of an inch, sometimes in a decimal equivalent of that fraction of an inch. You'll also find the mill number spelled out. 
uh, as to where that material was made. And then below that, you'll even find a bunch of references to the standards that are created by the agency that has spelled out all of these rules. Another type of stranded material you'll see is PSLs. That's parallel stranded lumber. So we talked about OSB and we have this multi-directional uh, strands to make a whole panel strong. Parallel stranded lumber will focus all of the strength of those strands all together in one line. So we get this kind of super grain that's going on. We can make these beams as large as we want to make them and as long as we want to make them because we're we're assembling this out of small pieces of wood that are all faced in the same direction, glued together, immense pressure, and these become very straight. They're very accurate. They're very stable and they're super strong. They get very heavy as well. Sometimes you have to crane these items in place on the job site and they are the specs and strength specs on them are just really great. So with a material like this, we've sort of transcended this limitation of wood, the, the largest size we can get out of a tree, and now we can make whatever we want and make it as strong as we want. You'll see a PSL used as a long beam. It might be for a very uh, long span, or it might need to carry a lot of weight. These are perfect for that. They're not the most beautiful product, so you generally do not see them exposed but they work really well for uh, load bearing situations. There's a whole nother group of engineer wood products. We call these laminated wood products. And this is a little more old school because this was the way we did it before we had OSB. And uh, plywood is a great example of that. We'll, we'll get into that. But the way a laminated wood product works is that we take thin layers of wood and we sort of stack them on top of each other. We glue them together, same pressure uh, application to make them nice and tight and straight. This also becomes very strong. The thing about laminated materials is they're generally more expensive because we need a lot more wood to make them. Here you see an illustration of how we add strength to laminated wood materials. We're going to take that grain that is the strongest in the direction of the wood grain and we're going to alternate those directions back and forth. Uh, when we sort of glue all those together, it's going to add strength in all directions to this material. So plywood might be the original laminated wood material. It's been around a long time. It's getting more expensive. We have a, a less expensive option, but you'll still see it used, used for sheathing. You might see it used for decking and you will definitely see it used for more finished uh, situation, say kitchen cabinets, surfaces that will be exposed. And the beauty of a plywood is the outside layers can be made of a really nice material so that what you see and touch looks very quality. The core can be just materials that are might not be uh, as pretty, but they, they hold together and they're stable and strong. Plywood, like our other sheet goods, comes in different thicknesses. You'll see half inch, five eighths, three quarters. These are our structural panels. You'll also see quarter inch. You'll see three eighths. You'll see seven sixteenths. Uh, you probably can find some thicker panels, but uh, I've rarely seen anything thicker than three quarters. Plywood also comes in standard panel sizes. Here you have your uh, mythic legendary four by eight panel. We use a four by eight panel because it will hit on our layouts, which would be 12 inches, 16 inches, 24 inches on center. And it works really well for that. Also, they're not hard to carry. The weight is uh, manageable and they're easier to install in those dimensions. We can even make lumber in this laminated uh, layer process. And LVL or laminated veneer lumber is exactly that. We're taking this idea like we do with plywood, but now we're growing that or making our dimensions so that we make beams. These are very heavy, dense structural beams, super strength specs on these. And they can work in situations where typical wood can't. Very similar to our PSLs, these will hold a lot of weight and carry a long span without bending. 
The major difference from an LVL and say a piece of plywood is that its purpose is to be a beam. Beams either carry a long span over an opening or they carry a lot of weight above them. And keep in mind, this thing can be made to any length that you need and just about any dimension. It's not limited to the size of the tree that the materials came out of. A special kind of laminating process for wood would be a glue lamb. This is another kind of beam, also to carry weight and to uh, span over a large opening. Glue lambs are made from solid timbers, say two by fours or two by sixes that are stacked on top of each other and glued. This can make a larger built up beam that appears to be solid wood, but is actually several pieces. The advantage to all of these layers is there's no one weak point in it. If there's a small defect in one of these layers, the other boards will help try to keep it straight and uh, kind of keep it stable. That's the benefit to all of this lamination process for all of these materials, really. So a glue lamb is not as strong as, say, an LVL or a PSL, but the one thing that it has going for it that the others don't is it is good to look at. It looks like wood. We like to show off our wood and a glue lamb can be exposed in a building. So this is as close as we could get uh, today to a solid wood beam. We can take these stranded materials and these laminated materials and combine them into something really special. This is a TJI joist, which is a truss joist I-beam. If we take a close look at this TJI, you'll see this laminated material on the top and this web on the top and on the bottom are both laminated. I have seen these also made with standard wood products, uh, just a solid wood. The center part is more uh, akin to what would be OSB. And these, this piece separates the top and the bottom. That's where the strength comes from. We use these in floor structures and they work as beams possibly even for roof structures. Super stiff, super light. I picked one of these up the other day. I think it was over 20 feet and it weighed almost nothing, but they'll carry a ton of weight. They are very strong and straight. And this has sort of changed the game for us, especially when we're talking about floor structure. We'll talk a lot more about these specific beams or joists in our floor framing lesson. So if you want to learn more about that when you're done here, go check that out. This last one is not exactly an engineered wood product. I like to throw it in though, because I believe this is one of the most engineered products we use in, in a building when we build. These have become very uh, popular and common, especially out here in the West where I live now. It's called a truss and a truss is made of a lot of very specialized pieces. These have to be designed. They're built in a factory. There's a lot of angles going on here. The typical use of a truss is to form uh, the shape of a roof or to work as a beam for a floor or even a flat roof. And you can identify a truss by the triangular shapes that are made by the struts or pieces that make up this truss. There's a lot of angles, but you'll always see this triangle set up in it. That's how you can identify it. Also, all of these connections are made with a steel plate on each side, the, the, the front and the back, and these plates are pressed in. The plates kind of have a bunch of nails in them. It's like a bed of nails. All of this holds this together very tightly and very strongly. And this truss as one unit can hold a ton of weight. The problem with trusses are if there's any damage to even one piece, it will jeopardize the strength of the entire truss. So if one of these is damaged on site, there's a big issue whether it can be used. They have to be repaired after an engineer spells out exactly how it has to be done. And a lot of times they can't be repaired at all. So this is super engineering as far as wood products go, made out of wood. We call them trusses. I think they're pretty cool. So there you have it. That's our engineered wood products. I think they're cool. I hope you do too. Uh, learn your materials. It can only make you a better builder. So don't forget, subscribe. If you learned something, click like and comment down below with any questions or input on this. Thanks again. I'll see you in the next lesson.